So I've never had a chance or the opportunity to look at my impact on my own growth or negative effect from the inside, like I have now. Um, we can say the devil's busy, the devil's doing this to stop this, you know, people coming against me, all the circumstantial stuff that happens, finance, business, name a couple of things that you could come up with. I know I can't hear you, but just the things you could say that kind of get in the way of your progress that you made that you that you've seen in your own life you know shout out for type of type it in the type it in the in the chat but things that we look at and go yeah well it's because of this it could be education finance school mother father kids job and on and on and on we can go right are you thinking of some things and God began to deal with me again and say to me, yeah, but what about the biggest hindrance to your growth, which is your perspective of yourself in me? What about that? I can do all things. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do all things. Yeah, you, I know you know the scriptures, son. But if you can do all things through me, why aren't you doing them? Oh, oh. you want to have that conversation. You want to go there, and the brother. Okay, okay. Um, because I'm being developed. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. It didn't say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me after I get my own strength up and be developed and learn this and do that. He said, I can do all things called for by him, of course, through him who strengthens me. Why aren't you doing all things? I'm gonna sit this one out and I'm just gonna let you tell me. <laughs> he said, because your inner view of who you are is more powerful than anybody else's view. It's more powerful than the, the, the world, more powerful than the people around you, your boss, your supervisors, your, your you know your, your your bank, your whoever. They have to bow to me. I'm gonna say this now, ready? But they can't bow to me on your behalf because you have not yet bowed to me on behalf of those things. Hmm. You still feel them. You still have them in a place of priority. Hmm. Hmm. You still think that my being able to move on your behalf is contingent on those things. Hmm. So how do you expect them to bow when you haven't bowed to me concerning those things? Okay. Am I speaking to anybody right now? This is making some kind of sense. Huh. So, of course, you know, my next question was, right? Who knows what my next question was? Probably is your next question. Well, how do you do that? <laughs> like, I thought I was, like, kind of doing it. You know, how do you do that? Ready? He said, one by one. As they present themselves. These are. This is not some big white paintbrush that you just paint over it and it's done. But as each situation presents itself, stay with me. You have to be aware of what you're being presented with at the moment and not let the enemy get you caught up in the big picture, but focus on where I have you in the door that I have you at right now. And you have to deal with it when it's present. A lot of us, especially people of color, We've been told we got so much to fix, if not from the outside world, from our own families, who has been told to them 
there's so much we lack and there's so much against you. Well, you know, you got your color against you and then you got this against you and then you got the police against you and you got the politics against you and you got the, you know, the, the this party versus that party against you and your know, community where you came from and lower schools and other people. And I'm like, yeah. He said, but then you have to have me in front of you and if I'm for you, who can be against you? So if you can focus on where I'm for you and not all the things that are against you, you can have a victory that's yours to keep permanently. I don't know about you, but that's kind of some shouting words right there. I know you're listening to me so soberly and I'm saying it so nice. I know if I say, but if God is for you, maybe you'll get more excited, right? But I'm saying it's still the same word. God said, I'm for you. And if you have me for you, all these things that may be realistically against you ceases to have power. Wow. Okay. Okay. So my process is I have to deal with what's before me right now. So I'll ask you, children of God, what's before you right now? What's, what's that door that seems to be the obstacle of obstacles? And before you start calculating all the other things you need to fix, shouldn't you be focused on that door and that door alone? That's the door that's confronting you. That's the situation that's in front of your face. That's the thing where you need to bow before God so that that thing can bow before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good week. I see you. <laughs> you know, it's the end of the message. No, but the, the reality was God said to me, let me correct you and stop trying to correct yourself. Let me guide you. Um, 2 Timothy 2.16 says, For all word is not of any man's or private interpretation, but it's God bread for exhortation, for instruction in righteousness, for rebuke. He said, my word serves that purpose. You have to sit before the word. Well, I do. God, I open the word. I say, he said, no, 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 no. I didn't say the letter said the word, the letter killeth, spirit giveth life. You got to get before me. I am the word of life. And you have to sit before me so that my spirit bears witness with your spirit. And he said, and if your word has, bears, if, if my spirit bears witness with your spirit, and then it lines up with the word, you have peace before the father. So I've tried to do a lot of things. And you've tried to do a lot of things out of your own interpretation or somebody else's interpretation of what's right and what's wrong for your life. So let's bring it home. Let me get my scripture here. So let's bring it home to this. We have an obligation. One main obligation to allow God to change us. And once we're changed, the situation changes based on what comes out of us, not us trying to change the situation so that we can then feel or believe that we've arrived or gotten better. Who knows what I'm talking about right here? We spend a lot of time trying to judge the move of God on the after effect on the external and what we see around us instead of allowing God to change what's in us so that we have changed the situation by who we are. Let me give you an example. We watched the Tyler Perry um, documentary, Maxine's Baby, and got to hear all of his backstory. And, you know, you just, oh, that's so sad. He was abused as a kid. And, wow, I can't believe they did him like that. I experienced most of what he experienced. 
what I did with it is not what he did. Why, where I allow God to take me and heal me, he took it and to turn it to drive. I, I'm going to say me, so I'm not talking about you. Turned it into pity, self-pity. I turned it into a disadvantage. I turned it into the reasons why I don't have the height that some other people have. Just me. I know nobody here does that, right? You know, living out of the reasons why you didn't get the opportunities is always easier than dealing with the who, which is you. So I listen to his story and I watch his critique. And I watched the heart he had to forgive and be bigger even than the people that he takes care of a person who's never even apologized to him and owned up the fact that he abused him. And then after Spike Lee trashed him and talked all this crap and called him coon and buffoonery and all this kind of stuff, he still named one of the sound stages after him in his studio. That's different. That's different. That's when you live above what the world is saying at you or around you and you step into what God has called you to be. What I'm doing today is pulling us up to the next level of things. And the next level of things is not external, it's internal. I will never rise, you will never rise above your perception of yourself, ever. Fears, hurts, bitterness, animosity, accusation, everything. You will never rise above your interview, which God will change first. Stop trying to be successful by accomplishment and become by God's spirit successful about his correction and chastening inside of you. Hebrews 12. I know that was a quick shift, right? At verse four, you have not struggled to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. And you have, and you have forgotten the divine word of encouragement, which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not make light of the discipline of the Lord and do not lose heart or give up when he when you are corrected by him. For whom the Lord disciplines and corrects is who he loves and he punishes every son whom he receives and welcomes to his heart. Hmm. What does that mean? Well, let's talk about that a minute because this is very important. You listening to me? Who the Lord loves, he disciplines. He chastises, he corrects. What I'm about to say is very sober but very solid. That scripture for me for a very long time, was the worst scripture in the Bible, even though I never spoke it out loud. Because I equated that who the father loves, he disciplines with the fact that my stepfather beat, kicked, chained me to the radiator and beat me for hours while I was bleeding. I, I related God's chastening to an earthly father that I was familiar with chastening. 
And some of it is not beating and hitting. Some of it is he shuns you out. He stops speaking to you. He neglects you. He leaves the home and never comes back. Whatever these stories are that you have of a father's correction, you associate with this. So I want you to start by saying God is not an earthly father. He doesn't come in with past trauma and bring on me what he got from his parents. He's a good father, a father of love, and he corrects me only with love. Does that help somebody? So I had to, and I've said this back in the past, go back into my file cabinet of my soul, of my spirit, open it, pull out the folder called Father, empty it, have the definition changed by him and reclassify it so that when my mind thought Father, it didn't go there. Go in your room. I'm going to come in there later and beat you. That image had to be removed. And it had to be replaced with a, distant, a different kind of discipline that I didn't even know. Are you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? I decided I would not discipline like I was disciplined. But I didn't know how to do other. Right? I would never do to beat my kids like I was beaten. So I knew what I didn't want to do, but I didn't necessarily know what I was supposed to do. So it was a way I had to learn to discipline them. Listen to me close. The way I know how to discipline minus the beating. So it became mental and not physical. Well, people won't be honest with these kind of conversations, have these kind of conversations. So you have a tendency to chastise people because that's the way you learn correction and shame people because that's the way you learn correction and you do that, but you decide the mind is some of them, but it's still the same thing. You just find our, what we call softer, lighter way to do it. But it's the same thing. So I found that with people, right? My thing was, I'll shun you. I'll shut you off. I'll go cold. I won't beat you. I just, and I won't disown you by leaving you, but I'll disown you by disassociation. I'm, tell, I'm telling on myself. I don't care about that stuff. I do it all the time. And I had to realize that I expected God to do that to me. I knew he didn't want me beat, so I didn't expect him to beat me. But I expected him to shun me. I expected him to not respond to me. I expected him to not answer me for a while because he's upset with me. I expected him to make sure I always knew what I did wrong because that's what my whole life was. See, see, I see people bear with me. You understand what I'm talking about? And even at this season of my life right now today, not saying I have comprehended, I'm pressing to the high calling. I've come to the realization, God, you don't shun me. You don't shut me out. You don't go dark on me in your discipline. So how do you discipline me when I'm out of line? How do you chasten me? How do you correct me? 
who wants that answer? Because, I mean, some people may not feel like they need that answer, but who wants that answer? Ready? By Holy Ghost conviction, you feel it right here. There's no lightning coming down going to strike you to death. There's no, you know, I'm going to take away your means to eat and leave you starving in the street. That's not the truth. It's conviction. You know it's the truth. Listen to what I'm saying to you. You know when God's checking you because you feel that check in your spirit, 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 baby. You know it. You can't even enjoy it. You're trying to sin and can't even have fun. <laughs> you know it. You can't even get the joy out of it. You know you can't do it. And he said, that, he said right there, that sense right there of ugh. he said that's how i chasing you i correct you i give you my word i'll send somebody to you i have a donkey come talk to you i speak to you i'll put in front of you i'll never force you i never neglect you i never shame you i never beat you i never leave you destitute i never leave you without i will always be there and answer your prayers and your questions but you will know in your heart that you're not where you're supposed to be. You know it. You know it. And I'm not even talking about sin stuff. Let, let's not even do that. Let's talk about things and moves you decide to make. I just believe this is what the Lord want me to do. And I and I just believe. And, and, and God's like, wah, wah. like, okay, <laughs> we're going to let that ride. And when you don't see it happening, maybe you'll come back and we'll have a new conversation. Because I didn't say all of that. You wrote all of that in. You, who knows what I'm talking about? You, I said one thing to you, you know, finish the whole paragraph with a whole bunch of stuff that you want. He chastens us. He corrects us by the, the sense of, you know, you're moving away from the Holy Spirit and you feel it. And you know, by doing that, you introducing yourself to a consequence of your own choosing by choosing not to be led by me. Whom the Lord loves, he chastens, he disciplines. What's the discipline? The discipline is to correct you, to tell you not to do that and do it this way and do it again and do it again and do it again and do it till you get it right. And that's a discipline. That's a training. He chastens you. He corrects you with conviction. He chastens you with practice of doing that which is right till it becomes habit. Can, can, can I have a conversation here? Can we have this? He leads you by his spirit and you know that the absence of peace haunts you until you get it right. You know he does. So God, you're not going to beat on me or make me hurt? No. I'm going to convict you by conviction. Somebody might want to write that down. I'm going to convict you by conviction. I'm going to show you that you're not right by showing you you're not right. I want you to grow to a place in the spirit that you sense my presence so strong that you know when you're out of it. And it doesn't have to be drastic and it doesn't have to be life altering and it doesn't have to be destruction in your life and all the buildings come caving in around you. That happens when you stay outside so long that you give the enemy access. But what happens when he convicts me? Repent. Fall on your face like David and repent. Not say I'm sorry, but repent, change direction. Not my will, but your will be done. We'll read this one more time. My son, do not make light of the discipline of the Lord. And do not lose heart and give up when you are corrected by him. It didn't say tortured. It didn't say stranded. It didn't say broken, as people will say in the church. He said corrected. What is it to be corrected? Hmm. Well, when God corrects you, you know, don't be upset because he's going to correct you. And, you know, he's going to have to make you go through some stuff. Where are you getting this stuff? Have you ever taught a child to write? Have you ever worked with children and taught them how to write? Or sp spell their name? Taught them how to count? 
and they hear you and they just start making sound. One, two, three, five, seven, eleven. You're like, no, 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 no. And what do you do? You correct them, baby. It's one, two, three, four, no, five, no, four. You know, kids are going to jump past four to five, right? That's correction. Why did we turn it into torment? Why did we turn it into a, some kind of abuse or spanking or painful thing? God corrects us by saying, no, baby, no. It's not. Seek ye first the things and then you seek. The, no, 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 no. You're going after the thing again. The kingdom. Yeah, I know, but the king, I know you want me blessed. Okay, okay. The kingdom first, and then all these things will be added. But I need these things, baby. The kingdom, and then all the things are added. You keep trying to jump past seeking the kingdom to get the things added. Let's get you back to the kingdom, and that's correction. And then the discipline comes from the practice. I'm going to practice seeking the kingdom and I'm going to practice seeking the kingdom and I'm going to practice seeking the kingdom and then all these things be added. And every time I get off track and start seeking the thing, I'm going to practice because he's going to correct me. And I'm going to practice seeking the kingdom so that these things be added. Okay. Can I put a little bit of things? No, 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 no. There we go again. Come on, let's try it. Say it with me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what happens? Right. Very good. And you work with me. Good job. Good job. I can see God. Like, good job. Good job. You follow what I'm saying? God's discipline and God's correction is no different than what you've done with your children. If you had children, nieces and nephews, if you, unless you're some a-hole, right? Crazy. I watch. Let me say this. I'm going to throw Ruth in the message, right? I watch Ruth because she's the baby of the group, right? And I watched her become a mother with like wide open eyes. Like when I met Sophie, you were already a mom. Watching Ruth was, was just amazing for me because watching somebody who didn't have or go to school or get a degree or study early child care or get a bunch of books by Dr. Whoever, just you got a baby and now you got to figure it out. And just watching you naturally. Figure it out. Most of the time, just by what felt right in your spirit. This is how I'm going to deal with that. And if it was wrong, you felt that conviction. No, that's not the way I want to, not, I want to talk to my daughter. Like, let me, hmm. Okay, I don't want to get away with murder, but at the same time, I don't want to be no, no monster over her. Hmm. And watch you make your adjustments. Now, with DJ, it's like an easier flow for you. He's like, okay, I don't figure it out a little bit with this one. I kind of understand what I need to do over here. Now, of course, he's different, different personality. So you still got some figuring to do. But still, different. God understands each of our personalities, baby. He gave them to us. So he knows how to discipline you. And listen to me close. He's not going to discipline Angie Dr. Brown, like he disciplined Sophie. It's two different babies. And he knows that. But the church tries to make you live under the conviction of the pastor and everybody else's problems and traumas and all this bull crap. And this is how God works. And this is what the word says. And this is what it is. It's like, God's like, you are my individual children with individual personalities. And I will deal with each of you according to the way you are built by who? Him. He knows it. I've said to my children many times, and some of you probably have said, listen, you didn't come with a handbook. I had to figure this out. Like, don't be getting on me about what I didn't do right. You didn't come with instructions, right? Well, fortunately for us, our dad has the handbook on all of us, and he has the instructions. He's not figuring it out. 
He knows exactly what we need and how we need it and the way we need it and when we need it. But my perception of my daddy at six, going on 65 years old has matured again because I'm going, I still have some stuff in the foul cabinet that ain't right. I've accepted you won't beat me. I accepted that you don't put sickness and disease on me to teach me something, which is taught in the church very big, which is demonic and ugly. But I have not accepted that you won't shun me and shut me out and turn your back on me and go cold on me. And I ain't going to help. I ain't going to help you pay your rent. <laughs> you know, I have not totally gotten free from that lie of isolation which is what I suffered a lot as a child or on top of the beatings. The beatings were one thing. They, they, they healed, but it was the locking me away in the room and leaving me there for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and not letting me go out, only come out the room to eat and get back in the room. That, that kind of isolation sits with me. And I realize that I have had, not anymore, but a real, real strong reaction to what I perceived as rejection. I would do anything for anybody, but the moment I felt they rejected me, I would just, that's it. Just my whole world would just be totally knocked off track. Maybe I'm the only one here, but I know that feeling. Now I have to go to the point of, well, people reject you because that's the way they respond. They respond to how they feel about themselves to, to you. They're going to treat you the same way. They're going to treat you any different. Well, going back to the beginning of my message, and I'm going to bring it home. God said to me, I love you. I correct you. I don't beat you. I don't starve you. I don't neglect you. I don't ignore you. I don't turn my back on you in shame. I don't shun you. I correct you. I sit down like a good teacher and go with it over and over and over patiently until you get it. And as long as you're willing to sit here and be corrected, I will sit here and work with you till you get it right. I chasten you by a sense in your spirit that you know that what you're doing doesn't line up. That's how I chasten you. I show you by showing you, not listen close, not by showing the world what an a-hole you are to make you look bad to everybody. I cover you, but I judge you inside yourself. Somebody bears witness with what I'm saying today. And we think everybody sees what we're going through. And we think everybody looking at us like we stupid. And you come to find ain't nobody know nothing. God done hid it from everybody. Nobody feels your shame. Nobody knows. And then when you come to the people you're supposed to come to, they go, yeah, I know. We're good. Don't worry about it. Let's get back to work. Because that's the heart of God. And I've been easy to do that for people, but receiving it for myself has been an issue. I can say, I have no problem about it. Let's, just, let's get on with it. Let me say to you, God corrects you with love. Say that. God corrects me with love. He corrects me with peace. His primary, de his primary desire is to restore peace to me. How many of you bear witness with that? Give me an amen. You are his baby. He loves you. You're not some wayward adult that he's disgusted with and is tolerating. He loves you, and in his eyes, you are forever his baby. I know as an adult, you don't see yourself that way, and life has taught you not to see yourself that way. But I'm telling you that God sees you that way. He sees me that way. I'm forever his baby, taking my first steps, learning to walk this thing out. And he don't get mad when I stumble. He helps me back up. He kissed my boo-boo, he cleans it off, and he says, do it again. Okay, no, 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 don't run right away. I need you to practice this. Can, can you slow, slow down? Slow down. Walk, baby. No, no, no. No, I, yeah, I know you want to get across the road. Slow down. 
walk and ask. I'm learning to say, will you hold my hand and walk with me? And he says, I thought you'd never ask. And he takes my hand and one step at a time, he walks with me. I'm getting emotional. He walks with you. And he takes you through. And he corrects the steps. No, no, you're stepping too far. Bring your leg in closer. He chases me in my spirit when I feel like I'm pulling the other way. But his been over me is love. And his been over you is love. And he will teach you to walk by love, in love, because God is love. He can't do it any other way. He doesn't come to assault you. He comes to love you. And that is something to hold on to. So I pray right now in Jesus' name that God goes in your foul cavity and pull out all those old images of correction and discipline and change and all the harsh images that have been planted there by man, by life, by probably biological parents, whoever. And I pray that God cleans school teachers, whoever. And I claim that pray that God takes it out and he puts a new image of a father in there, which is love. Love, 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 and more love. And I am compelled to do that which is right because it's this kindness that leads us to repentance, the scripture says. So we thank you, Lord, that you are leading us to repent every day because you are so kind and so good to us. We can't help but love you back. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And the saints of God who agree with that said, go ahead and type amen in the chat to just type it in there. Just type amen in the chat. Let's just get a bunch of amen in the chat. And if you want to type, God loves me. He corrects me with love. Type that in there, whatever you want to type. But amen. 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 That was nice. I got a little crowd participation here. I love you, saints. Um, I hope that ministered to you the way it ministered to me. And um, Jesus' name, if you want to unmute and stop the message, you can. May the word that you heard be God's blessing to you. Bring God's blessing to you. I'm all over the place. But, you know, if you want to get in and just talk a little bit and just celebrate, feel free to do so.